We have protective <laughs> packaging for offshore passages here. <laughs> figured out our system. We start with a layer of blankets and then we get nice soft cushion in the middle and a little bit stronger foam on top <laughs> and we protect our precious cargo right Aww. in the middle. Okay, show them what's really happening. <laughs> <laughs> We're packing up our bed because we're sleeping in the salon while we worked on the windlass which is done oh it's so done i'm so excited we've spent the last what is it two and a half weeks maybe working on this windlass drill some holes through it ah bruce i think that worked and it is finally finished so when we first bought this windlass i measured out this area here and said, oh yeah, it'll fit. And our chain would drop right into the chain pipe and we'd be good. We did some preliminary measuring and it looked like it was gonna fit in between our two four deck cleats right here. But when we set the windlass down there, realized that was gonna be a terrible idea. Our chain pipe is located really far forward. Would have been nice if this was, you know, back here because our hands, our lines, anything going around these cleats would just be banging into the windlass. There we go. So I spent a week learning how to fiberglass upside down on the ceiling in the chain locker, <laughs> which was not that fun. And then had to get all the backing plates and starboard mounting deck plates and everything drilled out and cut down. Those kind of don't which sucks. And then I had to cut a new hole in the deck for the new chain pipe. It's been a big giant project. I've already hit my first roadblock. I took all the screws out of here and this thing won't budge at all. I'm trying to decide, is it heat, sharpness, brute force, or chemical that is going to break the seal of whatever this caulk or glue or epoxy or something that's holding this chain pipe down, I don't know. So I'm gonna ask the experts. Okay, we're going with option A, brute force. Oh, nice, perfect. Success. A little help from the friends, you can get just about anything done. Okay, we've done just a little bit of scraping to clean off the caulk that was used. The next step is gonna be either use some acetone or to just start grinding. I need to sand about a eight or 10 inch circle around and bevel it out just to get the edges down a little bit so we can tie into the glass and give the glass a nice clean spot to attach to. While Kirk prepped the old chain pipe hole for glassing, I started my first sewing project. Covers for our teeth handrails, and whatever else I could make out of this old mainsail cover we got just before it was being thrown away. I'm thinking I'm probably only gonna get one handrail out of each of these sides. But do we have enough? Oh, from this whole thing? Yeah. Yeah. Sweet free canvas. Yeah. Who cares if it doesn't match? Yeah. I gotta go bother Bruce. Bruce. Booth. Gotta go bother Booth. I gotta go. To see if we can use it. Stowing methane. Alright, I've almost got this boat ready to do some sanding. Hopefully this kind of keeps the dust out of here for the most part. Because I don't Fancy sleeping in fiberglass dust. We're all set up here. I got my mask, my goggles, some padding to sit on, some gloves to wear, sander, sanding stuff. Let's do this.
happen? Uh, I just tried to do two things at once. I tried to pull the pin out while I was still pressing uh, the foot pedal down. Fabric shifted to the side. Wow. Yeah, look at that. Ah. Wow. Yeah. This is free canvas. <laughs> Yeah, that has nothing to do with the canvas, though. That's my stitch work there. <laughs> All right, well, hopefully that'll hold. That's even on the inside part, right? So you're going to flip it over and then stitch it again. You're right. Good thing no one's lives are dependent upon this sewing project. I wanted to get a little back here wet and not use the silica until you're ready to fill. Well, I'm going to make it nice and thick on the underside. I'm going to wet the underside. But I don't want it to be little, I don't want it to be drippy like that. Okay. I read it in the book. Okay, I believe you. <laughs> As they say, there are probably six ways to do it. It right. doesn't really matter, you They'll probably all, can't fix this out, but you even bought a cute little roller. Yeah. Cool. I spared no expense. I wanted to do this right, Greg. There is no right, man, I'm telling you. Did, did you ever see that That'd movie, more exciting. All Is Lost? Yes. Yeah, but that's stupid. The, 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 the movie <laughs> the about fuck? all the things to do wrong. Yeah. I couldn't even well, finish it. Can you imagine what Kara would do to me if I went out and it's pouring down rain and the Dodger's down and I leave the hatch open? Are you <laughs> kidding me? Okay, <laughs> here I go. <laughs> Your legs are ridiculously large for that tiny hole they're coming out of. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's very close to dripping on my face. Do you want like a face mask? I've got a face mask. Look. <laughs> I am your fiberglass master. <laughs> Too many chemicals to the brain. Yeah, chemicals in beer. <laughs> Saturday morning and it's beautiful and still out here and I think it's about seven o'clock and it is day two of fiberglassing the chain pipe closed and Kirk and I have been sleeping in the living room so on for the last four days I think because the V-Birth looks like this So last night you put on two layers, right? Yes. And this morning this is three and four? Yep. All right, I think that's it. <laughs> so this is the plug that I made to fill the hole from the top down when I laid the first glass underneath. And this gave me a close to flush surface so that when I laid the glass down, it laid nice and smooth and it didn't have big wrinkles in it. Whoa, they're a killer. I have 32 of these stitches to go. Really? I should say 32 total. I'm four in. <laughs> and that's not including like the stitches I have to make on each side of the handrails mm. to pinch them together. So that's another eight. Sorry, so how long is this going to take you? I don't know. go faster I'm... now that you have a template, right? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I was hoping I'd get them done tonight, but I think it's probably a little ambitious. So am I making dinner? <laughs> yeah, what are you making? Fajitas. Kirk's making leftovers. Okay, here's what I'm mixing up. Nice and soupy, but a little bit thickened. tight in there.
this is fairing compound, so it'll level out all nice and smooth. If you can get toothpicks so I can fill in these holes, okay. that'd be awesome. Got my last two handrail covers. Slaving away. <sighs> 10 o'clock. I'm exaggerating, it's like nine. Trying to save as much of that canvas as possible for all of our other things that we want to cover. Which are? We want to cover some winches and our outboard motor. We want to make a wind scoop for this forward hatch. You think we have enough canvas for that? Do we have enough time for that is the question. Yeah, definitely not. You look like a creepy monster now. Like a scary movie. Yeah, there we go. That's better. We just need a big long mount to be able to mount this off to the side of the camera because we could shoot in any dark weather scenario with this light dark weather <laughs> in any dark scenario with this <laughs> oh you're a scary person Ooh, scary story now you're a uh, angel yeah no <laughs> Kirk has taken to lining the cabin sole with pillows and cushions and I have been up in the pilot berth because the bee berth hasn't had a mattress in it for, man, it's gotta have been two weeks, right? A week and a half. Okay, you can stop acting like you're asleep now. Uh, I like to sleep now. When Kirk's not working on boat projects, he's working in the office. <laughs> what? The way the sun's shining through the window yeah. is illuminating every dust particle. All <laughs> the particles of dust. I am about to drill the first holes in our boat that I have ever drilled. Luckily, they're not anywhere near the water line. Oh, that's scary. Hey, Abby. These look pretty good. Those are some big holes. Uh oh. Woo. Okay, that's one. After drilling pilot holes and enlarging them to slightly more than we needed, the next step was to fill them back in again with thickened epoxy before re-drilling the final holes. Why the grin? We have all four bolts through. That's through one thing. We need to get it through two more things. Two more layers? Two more layers of straight shot four inches of bolts without a drill press is kind of tough. I kind of want to put this on the boat and see how closely this stuff lines up. What I want to see is these bolts line up with the holes and those kind of don't, which sucks. Got one more pilot hole to drill and then two more bolt holes and then we can test fit. We needed to keep the holes straight through the deck and both layers of starboard. One on top to cover the old chain pipe and one below as a backing plate. These are the scariest two bolts. These are gonna be what makes or breaks the fitting. So we're using, what are these, 10 millimeter? Or yeah, 12 millimeter? 10 millimeter. Bolts, this drops in. Well, all four of these have to drop in. These ones are gonna be the hard ones. I should have done these first. Three! Ah, ah, ah. And number four. It's always the last one. Boat projects are 75% done, and then I get called into a phone call for work, and I have to stop. That's what happens when you live and work on a boat. Okay. What about peanut butter? 
But wait, what are we using peanut butter for? <laughs> so we're trying to figure out how we can line up this backing plate um, to all the bolts that are going through the deck and to, to be able to drill the holes through so that they line up perfectly with the bolts. And the only way to do that is somehow make a mark with the bolts onto the starboard by like pushing it onto the bolts. Because we don't think that the bolts are going through our deck, through the starboard on top of the deck, and through the windlass exactly and, vertical. Right. Kirk asked me how he thought we could make an impression on the starboard, and the first thing that I said was peanut butter because I was just going to eat it. So he would dip <laughs> the bolts in peanut butter. Yeah, or like, you know, wipe a little bit of peanut butter on the bolts. <laughs> but that seems like a stupid idea. So then we're thinking paint which we have none of, except for spray paint, but acrylic paint would really be the best. Um, and then, I had, then a, I had a thing of lipstick that I used to use when we were working on condos to do kind of the same yeah. thing. And Kirk said, what about lipstick? And I said, I don't own any. <laughs> but, so I had this, thank you mom, that I haven't used yet, Clinique Lip Gloss, which is nice and gooey and has a little bit of color, hopefully enough so that Kirk can drill some holes through it. Starboard. So yeah, now I'm gonna go paint the bolts with lip gloss. I'm gonna go pull back them out so there's only one or two threads showing. Okay, then I'll do that. It's gonna take you a minute to back the threads out, right? Yes. Back the bolts out? Okay. Perfect. Hey, Bruce. Yeah. We're gonna just paint on this stuff real quick. Make sure the outside has it because they're a little bit concave, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Bruce, I think that worked. Excellent. What are you doing right now, Kirk? We are putting life caulk sealant on the threading of our bolts that are going to go through our deck. It's all the way down, which is going to basically glue everything together, including my washers and nuts here on the end. All right, Bruce, All right. we're ready to tighten down. Yep. All right, let's do the other forward. Okay. That's an installed windlass. <laughs> Freaking sweet. Oh, now I just gotta cut a giant hole in the deck to put the chain through. Yay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. It looks nice. Take a hole, right? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Yeah, but don't go all the way through. Go into the gel coat with this one, and then start the other one. Kind of go back okay. and forth. Okay. I just cut two two and three quarter inch holes in the bow of my boat. It was kind of scary. I'm just uh, filing this down to get a nice tight fit. And then we're gonna mix up some epoxy real thick so that it will stick to the vertical walls of the core of the deck uh, and let that sit overnight. And then we will sand that down again tomorrow morning and put in the chain pipe uh, to finish it up. Put a lot of holes in the boat lately, but hopefully those will be the last for a while. And there we are. So the chain goes right through here, straight down in, and we are happy campers. Lauren has been doing a lot of sewing. She's made us some handrail covers. She's also made us these cute little winch covers, compass cover as well. It is hiding under here. And then she's going to make us a windlass cover today. And she'll be done sewing for a while. And I think she's happy about it. Love, I'm stuck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll get you out. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you did like it, please give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet to our channel, you can click the subscribe button below. Do it. Oh, but for real, we really appreciated all the comments. Thank you so much for all the stories and everything. It's been really fun to read. And all the emails that we've been receiving through our website. Um, and if you haven't commented below, if you haven't said hi yet, do it. Say Drop hello. a comment below.